Anders Asland is a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council, a think tank based in Washington. In the early 1990s, he advised the Russian government on its reforms and has written several books on the Russian economy. Uh, Anders, thank you for joining us. Um, just briefly, what do they use the money in this fund for? This is entirely in order to finance the budget. So what uh, Minister uh, of Finance uh, Silovanov uh, today said, it is we will have to use $42 billion out of this reserve fund that is currently $70 billion. And this is a rainy day fund. So it is, on the one hand, quite a bit of the money that they would have to use. On the other hand, if you take the total Russian the currency reserves, that's uh, three, uh, $177 billion. So Russia is not running out of money, but it has uh, to tighten its belt quite substantially. You describe it there as a rainy day fund. Presumably this is what they put the money aside for. Days like this when the energy prices are low, surely they'll just top it up when the energy prices recover, won't they? Well, if uh, the energy prices recover, last time uh, when uh, energy prices have been high for a decade, they stayed low for two decades. And we might uh, be in for a long period of low uh, uh, oil prices. What role do you think the Western sanctions against Russia over its involvement in Ukraine have, have had? Have they contributed to this fund being uh, depleted? Indeed. In a normal case, Russia could simply uh, borrow abroad. Russia's public debt is uh, quite small, 17% of GDP, to compare with 90% of GDP in uh, the European Union on average, but Russia can't borrow abroad. It can only use uh, its own uh, currency reserves. So therefore, Russia is in a, a quite a tight spot because of uh, the Western sanctions, but it has been very fiscally conservative wisely before. So therefore, it is not getting into a, into a crisis. Default is completely out of the question. Okay, Anders Asland uh, there in Washington. Thank you.